Hi there and welcome to Pragma. During the next few minutes I would like you to listen to the engagement journey that we embarked upon about 10 years ago. And I call it a journey because there's not really an a end point to this. It's a, it's a continuous process um, you need to do um, to involve your staff uh, and to really engage your staff. Um, so yes, it's really about the journey up to this point in time, the end of the year 2016. Before I start a little exercise that we use also to engage our staff and to get to know each other a little bit better, my name is Stefan Peterson. Firstly, a bit about my family, the F of that acronym called FORM. I've been married to Yolanda for about 18 years now and um, I have two beautiful teenage daughters, Karu 15 and Carla 12, and currently eagerly awaiting the arrival of our Laat Lamiki called Simone. In terms of my occupation, I studied mechanical engineering at Stellenbosch University and graduated there uh, at the end of 1995. And then for about, um, yeah, about 13, 12, 13 years, I uh, worked in the engineering industry uh, as a mechanical engineer, worked for companies like Fine Chemicals Corporation and NAMPAC, and then moved to Pragma um, almost 10 years ago. It was at Pragma where I made my career change into the field of organizational development and I've been specializing in that field for the last six years or so. That little picture there at the top um, really depicts what I, um, what my passion really is when it comes to my, my work and it's really to unlock human potential and to show people that there's a lot more inside of them that they need to discover and that they can do. And um, I think we in Pragma also try and create an environment where people can really realize their full potential. On the recreation side, I love music, I'm into gardening, reading, running, um, big part of my life started a non-profit organization called Distance for Difference and through that we raise funds for children in need and then you'll see my job I also put down under recreation uh, I just love what I do on a day-to-day -day basis can't wait to wake up in the morning and I'm one of the lucky few in the world about two out of every ten people that can say I utilize my strengths most of the day so really I do see most of my job as recreation and then lastly, my message, I'm an above-the-line thinker, positive person, and always try and look out what can I do to be the change that I want to see in, in the world out there, a very negative, below-the-line kind of world that we live in. Um, and then I'm also a Christian, um, really a, a safe person, and I know exactly where I'm going if I die today. Enough about me, let's talk about Pragma. Just a quick few, few words, just a bit of background about our company and then we'll dig right deep into our engagement journey. And that's our vision, smart enterprise asset management solutions for the world, the Pragma, the Pragma way. Over the last 26 years, um, that's how old we are, uh, is a, we are as a company, um, we've really developed numerous ways of doing proper physical asset management. Uh, we're living in a, in a world that's fast, changing um, we're talking about the internet of things and um, you know smart assets um, really talking to each other and talking to us and we really need to be integrate creating all the new and latest technologies into the world of physical asset management so that's really our visions vision is to provide these, these smart asset management solutions to the world our purpose is really just to partner with our clients and and that word partnership is so 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 important it's really about a trusting relationship that we have with our partners on a day-to-day -day basis and we would like to partner with them to optimize the enterprise asset management processes um, and really it's a question of balancing those three things performance cost and risk not an easy thing to get right but we really do believe we have the expertise and we've demonstrated that at numerous clients over the last 25 26 years our service portfolio integrated asset management solutions consists out of asset care services facilities management condition monitoring that via recent uh, acquisitions over the last year or so uh, tools and technology specialized training and consulting and projects no time to dig deeper into that but that's a summary of all the services that we provide 
Then the structure of the organization, there's a holdings company and then several divisions that uh, services our clients throughout South Africa and the world. Um, I fit into the holdings um, company there, part of the Exco, and people and organizational development manager is just way too long a title, so a bit of, a, bit of a tongue in the cheek title there for myself, the CPO, I'm the chief people officer. Right, a few pictures to show you guys what we're all about. Um, really, uh, we would like our clients to, to focus on what they do well. Whether it's finding uh, a nugget, a piece of gold, uh, running a business, a brand and building, uh, you know, you know, a business up. Let, let our clients concentrate on what they're supposed to do well while we help them and while we focus on the asset management, physical asset management practices. And again, we do that through um, all those services that I've just shown you in our service portfolio. We also develop our own software, although our services can be rendered on any of the well-known enterprise asset management uh, software packages out there like SAP and Maxima. A few of our client references in the manufacturing industry, um, moving over to facilities references. The original equipment manufacturers, guys like Tetra Pak, Main Food, and then very much into um, municipalities these days as well, uh, really making amazing um, you know, progress, especially at the likes of the city of Cape Town and the city of Durban. We're into mining and minerals, so you'll see our client base is really all over, um, and we are also busy to expand our footprint globally. Um, we're just opening in January 2017 our first European office in uh, Maastricht, in the Netherlands. And that's a few of our uh, client reference logos, uh, all our South African clients, just a few of them actually, and then also a few of our uh, international ones. All right, and then before we dig into uh, you know, our engagement journey, we are very proud to say that we are proud level one triple B contributor. Um, and although the score is good, you know, it's really about the real intent behind this. And I think throughout, the, through, through, you know, the last few years, over the last few years, Pragma has really gone out of their way to do this for the right reasons, to really give back to, to um, previously disadvantaged individuals um, and really building up this country um, step by step. And um, we are, yeah, just a privileged organization to make a real difference in, in, in this particular field. That's our promise. In the end, it's really about creating peace of mind for responsible asset owners. Right, so enough about the company. Let's go right into um, the stuff that I believe really matters as well. Well, at least as much as, you know, delivering great service to our clients. Those are our four values. And the two that I'll be focusing on is really people and engagement. Even the word engagement is one of our four main values. Really fostering an environment where people are recognized, where they're valued, where they're developed, and um, yeah, where they can really unlock the potential that is locked up inside of them. A few years ago, I thought about what are the things that really should be in place for any organization to be really successful. And for me, it came down to these four elements. There must be a great vision. There must be a point A where we are currently and then there must be a point B where we're heading towards to. And our CEO must, you know, his, his main responsibility is to create that vision, to create that point B where we as a company can move to. Then he surrounds himself with great leaders and we really put a lot of effort into leadership development because they need to make that vision a reality. For us also very important is to utilize people according to their strengths. There's nothing better to see a team where the team members are all in positions where most of their strengths are utilized most of the time. There's nothing better to see a team like that operating extremely well. Um, I'm a big fan of the work of Marcus Buckingham. 
um, and been following you know his work right from first break all the rules uh, now discover your strengths etc and the latest work on standout and we're going to talk a little bit about um, yeah just what some of the things uh, are that he is saying that we as organizations need to concentrate on when it comes to strengths and engagement and then lastly I really do believe engage workforce gives us um, an edge um, and we're going to um, show you right at the end of this little presentation some of the positives that came out of our focus on engagement during the last decade. So let's start with a few definitions quickly. Um, you know, how do we define engagement? Um, so I've just highlighted two or so that I really, really like. And if I can just highlight the words there in white on the screen, it's a willingness to give discretionary effort, a willingness to give give discretionary effort going the extra mile we do, we don't expect of our people to work overtime all the time every day every week but when the chips are down and when there are challenges um, you know engage workforce will uh, dig in their hills and get going and tackle those challenges um, a person that's disengaged will simply do what's necessary to get by and he will not give anything extra and then there's this real emotional bond with your employer. Uh, you know, really being proud about the organization, about the brand, uh, and a real connection, a real emotional connection with the, with the employer. And that goes a far and a long way to, to deliver great service at our clients, which is our number one priority, of course. Second one that I do like as well, that, you know, engage employees are you know, they're simply anxious to contribute. They really do want to make a difference. They go out there every day to th and, and think, you know, how can they make the world a better place for their clients and for their team members and for their managers and for their leaders. And that's a great employee to have. I would like to, you know, say a few words about client service at this point. Um, Again, you know, business can't uh, stand on, on, you know, on solid ground if there's not a great client base. And what is, what is really important when it comes to servicing your client? Um, a question I would like to ask our employees quite often is, Mr. Employee, are you coming to work to be excellent today? We don't want people to come to work to be just good or to be average, obviously not poor. We want them to be excellent in what they do. Excellence, excellence, excellence is critical when it comes to client service. So that's a question that we ask of our employees daily. Then we're still in the human to human business. And, and I'm referring you to a few words that was mentioned by Horst Schulze, he's the CEO of the Capello Hotel Group. In one of his speeches, he said, it's not the bed talking to the bed. It's not the... You know, the curtain talking to the, the cushion. No, it's humans talking to humans. It doesn't matter in which business we are. There's always going to be a human element. Yes, we're talking about the Internet of Things and technology and all of that. But it's still, we are all still in the business of human to humans. And we need to keep that in mind. And the human being is a complex uh, animal. Uh, it's not easy, it's not straightforward, and you need to be really, really conscious of the fact that there's emotions involved um, and the you know behavior profiles and, and a whole lot of different things, emotional intelligence, etc. when it comes to humans. Then client loyalty, second very important thing for us, client loyalty um, really only happens when there's a lot of trust in, in that relationship. Our stress built by simply giving your client what they want, what they signed up for when they originally signed that contract with you. So we are very, very focused on making sure that our clients can trust us, that we build up that trust and that we do absolutely nothing to break it down because as we all know trust takes years to build up and it can be broken down in a moment. So what is it that our clients want? They obviously want defect free products or a defect free service so that's what we're striving for. Um, you need to go for timeliness, you know, promise, make a promise and deliver on that promise on the day that you said you will deliver it or even before that. Timeliness is still a very important factor. And then last one there is friendliness. 
Simply having a smile on your face and walking into a client's office with a smile on your face goes a long way to build trust and to build client loyalty. Um, in fact, Horst Schulze says this is the number one driver um, when it comes to um, creating client loyalty. So on the back of that, uh, I love this Chinese proverb that says a man without a smiling face must not open a shop. A man without a smiling face must not open a shop. Think about your own employees. Are they smiling? Especially when they're in contact with your clients. And then also something that we are very much focused on and here in Pragma um, that really also drives engagement for us. It's based on a, a book um, called Pink by, uh, called Drive by Daniel Pink. The truth about what really motivates people. He talks about three things. The acronym AMP. Your people need to have autonomy. They need to be able to master what they do, become experts in what they do. And somehow they must see the purpose of all of this. What is the purpose of my job in the bigger scheme of things? Things. If there is not a purpose to my job, if it's not significant, um, if I can't understand how the little that I do, doesn't matter how simple it might seem to them, how that fits into the bigger purpose of the organization, they are not going to be engaged. So that's three things that we try and get right here at Pragma as well. And that obviously also drives engagement. So we in the field as uh, organizational development practitioners, that's what I am. Um, and just to quickly make sure that you, do, that you do understand that there's a big difference between HR and organizational development. Human resources is not organizational development development. HR is typically all your processes that needs to be in place, your industrial relations, your policies, your performance management systems, all the tools perhaps you know would um, fall under HR. Organizational development perhaps a bit difficult to define but I, but I love this definition by Peter Block. Restoring humanity. Restoring humanity to companies, environments that have so dehumanized because they after process performance and profit and as I always say extremely important aspects those you can't neglect them you need to have good process you need to drive performance you need to drive profit but if you're going to drive that to the detriment of humanity uh, you're going to have a sustainability problem it's not going to be sustainable good business so we are in the business as OD practitioners to restore humanity to the workplace and uh, our specific department's vision really is to deliver Pragma stra strategy, our business strategy, by offering really good research-based um, value-adding OD training and tools and analysis and insights, etc. And while never losing the focus that we have a very unique culture in our organization um, and a world-class strength utilization figure and a world-class currently employment engagement uh, figure as well. That didn't happen overnight. So for anybody that's interested in engagement, engaging your staff, this is a journey and it's quite a long journey. It took us a decade of learning and trying and listening and acting to, to get to the stage that we are today. But I wanna really just say to you, it's really possible if you focus on the right things. Okay, you've seen that picture before. That's really, um, you know, my vision for um, the OD department in Pragma as well. I love this picture it, uh, of the Formula One team. For me, it's a picture of a really engaged team. Everybody willing to go the extra mile, not for their own glory necessary, but for the glory of the driver there in that case. Um, and I also love this next definition of the difference between engage and disengage employees. Firstly, engage employees stay for what they give. They really do love their work. Disengage stay for what they get. It's all about the job conditions. Do I have an aircon in my office? Is there growth for me? Who's going to talk to me about my career? It's all what can you give me? What can I get out of this relationship with my employer? Engage is really about how can I help? How can I grow others? How can I add values to, uh, value to others on a daily basis? All right. And then why are we so focused on engagement within Pragma? It all started with a picture that I once saw probably now about seven, eight, nine years ago. 
at a session of Symphonia, I think was the company's name. Um, and somebody showed me this picture and, and, and said to me, you know, do you guys understand how value is created um, within a company? So when you have an employee, what makes up the value that that employee puts on the table on a daily basis? And it starts there at the bottom with obedience, diligence and intellect. Obedience, diligence and intellect. And guess what? That is stuff that we can buy. That is what you expect at least when you appoint a person at your company. But that's only 20% of the total value that that employee will typically put on the table. The rest, people taking initiative, people being creative when they are faced with a new challenge or ambiguous sort of situations. They can be creative in um, taking initiative and coming up with smart new solutions and then having passion for what they do. And passion is obviously and often a misused word, but there's a lot to be said for a person that loves what he does on a daily basis. So those other three things, initiative, creativity and passion, actually contributes 80% of the total value. And what we've also seen what this person said all those years ago, that 80% is given by choice. It's a daily choice an employee will make whether I'm going to be in, take, taking initiative today, being creative and, and having passion in what I do. Passion, creativity and initiative. Only given by engaged employees. All right. So that for us, you know, that sort of... You know, I really got interested in in this particular picture and, in, and, and over the years I kept that at the back of my mind. And we as Pragma and leadership at Pragma really saw how initiative and creativity, innovation and passion uh, soared over the last number of years as we, um, you know, created an environment where people can be engaged easier. And over the years, we've got several different initiatives that, you know, we can typically group under OD type of activities and initiatives um, that has all helped to engage our employees. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to go on too much longer, but um, it's really, there's so many examples that I can give you. I'm just going to highlight a few. And I'm going to start with a strange one, personal development. Personal development, what is that? You know, yes, we talk about technical development, very important. But, um, you know, teaching our people how to deliver the business processes at clients, etc. All very important, all very good. But the, for me personally, that's only half of the total picture. You know, what happens, you know, when people are at work? Often they think about the following kind of questions. You know, am I utilizing my strengths? You know, am I doing the right things in terms of my career growth? What can I do differently to ensure better career growth? Let's uh, not stay too long on finances, but everybody worries about their finances. Typically, their finances are in a mess. They don't budget. They don't save enough for retirement. How can I grow on a daily basis? What is success, really? And I just thought, you know, and I took myself before I had the wonderful privilege to be mentored in my early 30s, I had these same questions. And often I got myself, um, you know, realizing that, you know, I'm thinking about all of these questions. I don't know what to do about them instead of focusing on my work. So we just said, listen, let's help our people to answer these questions, to um, help them to ask the right questions, get the right answers so that they can park all of these good things so that when they're at work can concentrate on what they have to do. And we've uh, created this um, suite of personal development courses and anybody in our organization can, roll, um, can enroll for these courses. Um, I take them through these sessions, we mentor them, uh, we give them some homework, some practical things to think about in their own lives. And yes, you'll see a few practical uh, business type things there in as, as well, like meeting facilitation, uh, client service, uh, presentation skills even. But these are, uh, you know, all part of this total package that we deliver to our people. And over the years, that has made a very significant impact on their lives, helping them to sort out those personal questions they have so that they can focus while being at work. And we've seen a lot of growth over the years.
So let's quickly talk about engagement measurement. So that was just one quick example out of that total picture. Um, and if this time, I'll perhaps take you through one or two more. When it comes to engagement measurement, and there's many different tools. Uh, they, they call this one of the legacy legacy measurement tools, the Gallup Q12. Marcus Buckingham, the strength guru, was actually also involved in setting this up originally. And uh, we started, we did our first little survey back in the year 2005. Um, there's 12 statements that your um, employees must uh, say that they totally disagree, up to totally agree with or strongly agree with. And then you get a certain score. Based on those scores, people will also be categorized as actively engaged, uh, disengaged, or actively dis uh, disengaged. Um, and our first measurement looked like that. Pretty poor and, and actually quite nerve-wracking to us as a leadership group. It was really an eye-opener that you know our employees were obviously not that engaged and that we had work to do. And in the first few years, we did many of these surveys, but the trick was, um, you know, to really act on this, to give through the information, um, to say to our people, this is what we've picked up, and this is how we're going to help our team leaders to get this right. Ten years later, the picture looked like that. So it's really possible to create um, environment where people are engaged. It is a lot of hard work. It's not the work of one individual. It's the work of each and every team leader. Where does engagement happen? It happens with the team leader. I obviously often say people leave managers. They don't leave companies. You all know that statement. It's so true. Uh, so it's very difficult to centrally drive engagement in an organization. If it's not driven at team leader level, it's not going to happen. All right. So that's the picture, and it's given us amazing, amazing edges in the world of business, which I'll show you just now. So let's just quickly benchmark. So Pragma in 2005, we've now categorized into those three main categories, engaged, disengaged, and actively disengaged. Uh, the picture didn't look all that good to us. Actively disengaged individuals are those guys that's against everything and anybody and every new suggestion that the leadership make they have something to say they also negatively influence those around them quite easily you obviously want to see as much blue as possible disengage are those guys they come to work they do what's necessary but no discretionary effort you'll always have that but you'll really need to minimize the red category the world average based on a 2013 gallup study about 13 percent engagement levels worldwide what's the south african one the south african figure even worse only nine percent but look at that 45 percent red category that's that is toxic our country is bleeding productivity because of that world class so uh, gallup works also work with organizations to help them improve their engagement levels um, and th that is the figure that they say is, is sort of world class figures now, we've done it on our own a bit here at Pragma with the help of all the different team leaders. And our own picture looked like that in the year 2015. In that same year, I worked with one of our clients and, you know, just realized, you know, in the same country, two companies, totally different engagement levels and obviously total, totally different performance levels as well, as well. That's typically where we were 10 years ago. Again, that picture just shows you it is possible to change. Okay, so what did it all give us? Just very shortly, uh, Gallup did a study in terms of productivity levels. Typically, they say an uh, actively disengaged guy will give you about four out of every 10 hours that you pay him in terms of productive hours. The middle category, about six. The top one, about nine. If we were still at the productivity levels or rather the engagement levels we were in the year 2005 we would have lost out on 26 million rand of productive hours every year so we now that we are so engaged are saving our company 26 million rand in hours in non-productive hours sick leave i took two groups one disengaged one engaged the disengaged group over a two-year period typically took three times as much sick leave. Again, 
productive hours lost. Strategy buy-in, you come up with a new strategy. How likely are people to buy in um, into this new strategy? We've um, measured a specific element and typically we saw that um, the engage group is twice as likely to engage in this new strategy as the disengage group. And there were many highlights over the last decade. We took part in the Lloyd Best Company, uh, which is just for us an indication how we compare to some of the others. We reached a level of excellence for all the years that we took part. Um, we have a very innovative student training program um, where we, um, in the year 2015, received several awards for. Um, while the world average in terms of strengths, uh, people, uh, you know, I mentioned that earlier, two out of every 10 people saying that they use their strengths most of the time. We also focus a lot on, on getting that right, helping people to discover their top five strengths by utilizing the, the strengths finder and then working with them through the strengths course, through individual discussions, trying to get people to operate more according to their strengths. And in the year 2015, again, eight out of every 10 people in Pragma said that they utilizing their strengths most of the time. With this slide, I just want to warn you, um, engagement, as Marcus Buckingham said in one of his recent um, video blogs, engagement is not a photograph, it's a film. Engagement is fluid. It, ha it changes from almost day to day. And that's why it's so important to handle engagement at team level and to, to do it as real time as possible. Almost like we try and do for our clients when it comes to asset management uh, information that you need to make proper decisions. We want to be as real time as possible. The same goes for engagement measurements. So when it comes to measuring it, I um, really do love the work that Marcus is doing lately and I'm going to uh, show you a slide uh, where he highlights four, four very important things when it comes to engagement as well. But things do change. You need to build up trust over years, showing your employees that they don't just fill in surveys for the sake of the survey, that you're actually you know, reading it, listening to it. Um, you need to be very consistent and just be, yeah, just be on the lookout for changes that can happen very, very quickly in, in organizations. So what? So what? You know, you've got this great engagement program and you've done well on that. What has it given you? You know, what does the shareholders see, want to see in the end? They want to see performance. And for us, there were really excellent outcomes. And I'm going to try and illustrate it via the next two slides. Firstly, you'll see the, the column 2005, 10 years later, 2015. Let's start with engaged employees. Percentage-wise, 26, now we're 80 versus a world average of 13. Our employee turnover figure, so how many people left us in a year, were at 22% back in 2005, and that dropped down to 10, way below the SA average of 14. Then strength utilization went up from 60 to 80, and now we're getting to the important figures, the, the rands and the cents. I showed you, I quickly mentioned the productivity improvement over the last decade of about 26 million annually. And now two very interesting figures. Our sales progress or um, you know, multiplication over the last decade, if it were X, a uh, factor X in uh, 2005, it's now 5X 10 years later. That's the eternal rate of return for 17% for those interested in that figure. But much more interesting is what happened to our profit before income and tax. Again, if it was an X in 2005, take a guess. Is it, is it the same as the sales? Five? Is it, is it less? Is it more? I think you all expect it's definitely going to be more, but how much more? Would you have imagined it's 17 times more than it was in 2005? Now that talks to productivity, that talks to efficiency. Same group of people willing to walk the extra mile, coming up with initiative, with creativity and having passion. Those three things that I've mentioned in the beginning. I really do believe that our higher engagement levels also had a good and a great part to play in these figures. We weren't just lucky. Uh, you know, no business out there can just be lucky over such an extended period like 10 years. And I'll show you what happened to our company valuation graph during that 10 years and the consistent growth that you'll see in that graph. It wasn't a fluke that happened just once or twice. There was consistent, sustainable 
better efficiency over that last decade. Alright, so the 10-year growth figure is 26% compared to 18% uh, uh, all share index on the JSE. Um, and that's some of the best performing companies out there like the, the NASPERS and MTNs and so on. Um, we've matched and exceeded their, um, their performance. So yeah, let me show you the group valuation history. From the year 1990 when Pragma started to the year 2001, you'll see there was a pretty good growth. Well, let's take it to the year 2005. Pretty steady but limited growth for the first 15 years of our organization's history. In the last decade, coincidentally the decade that we also really started to focus on organizational development and, and really creating an environment where humanity uh, is, is back in the workplace, we've seen tremendous, tremendous growth. In that block, something amazing happened. And which, you know, shareholder and investor in a, in a company wouldn't like to see something like that. That little blimp there in 2012, by the way, is just when we had maybe made a bit of a bad decision with one of our investments. Um, and tough economic times uh, over in, in the South Americas, for example. But the question we put to our own employees is, guys, you see this graph. What do you say was the differentiator in the last decade? And I did a little word cloud of the words that was used the most in that little uh, question that we asked and the feedback that we received. Let me just um, simplify that a bit further. Employees, people, the two words that we use the most, employees and people. Yes, coupled with great leadership, a focus in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and also the importance of our clients. But our own people said, that's what they believe. The focus that we've put on our own people, they believe that made a difference. In a recent client survey, we asked uh, the guys to, to just rate us on 50 different elements that we believe create loyal clients. These were the four that were rated the highest for us as an organization. Sincerity, solid and stable relationships, integrity and respect. We're very proud of that. Um, and again, that talks to people that are really engaged, that um, understand that we are in the business of human beings talking to human beings. Questions about respect and integrity and being sincere in what we do. You're not going to see this in a disengaged group of people. Also recently asked our own employees, what values do you believe the camp company stands for? And again, the words that we used the most were those big words. Integrity, 19 times. Honesty, 17. And it was just about 50 people that took part in this specific um, quick check that we did. The word people, again, number one, was used for 23 times. Engagement, the word engagement, clients, value, respect, employees again, honesty. Really, really, really good to see that. We asked them to, to comment about the best thing uh, they can highlight about their work. Take some time, maybe pause the slide and quickly read that. But what do our own employees also say about why is it special to work for us as an organization? Let's just listen to a few of their comments. Why is it special to work for Pragma? Well, here I count as an individual. I am afforded the opportunity to grow and learn every day. This is well and truly my family away from home. For me, it's special to work at Pragma because management cares about our development. And Pragma is a nice company to work for. I've been here for 10 years already and this is where I'm going to retire one day. You get the opportunity to wake up every morning and be excited to come to work because you can add value to your clients and smile at your colleagues because they do that often <laughs> for most mornings and um, mainly um, Pragma is a bunch of extraordinary people always willing to go the extra mile. 
Um, I think Pragma is a very special place to work for. Um, I believe here that you are not simply just an employee. Um, you're actually part of a big family. You're not just a number. Everybody around here knows everybody right from the MD down to the cleaning staff. And also I think Pragma has huge growth potential. You won't stagnate in a certain position. Um, if it's your choice and your will, you can grow to anywhere in the company you would like to be. Pragma is the first company that I started working for after completing my diploma. Um, and 11 years later, I am still here. That does speak volumes with regards to the type of company. At Pragma, I feel at home. I'm challenged every day. I'm fulfilled and part of a growing family. Right, great words from our own employees. And again, I think you can you know, derive from that the, the high engagement levels we have in our company. Let's just quickly talk about, last few slides, the future of engagement. We currently, um, as I said before, the Q12 is probably a bit of a legacy engagement tool, but still being uh, widely used out there. We are currently investigating the use of alternatives, um, and one that we do like quite a bit is the new Thomas Engage one, which has been going for a few years in the UK, and now also here in South Africa. And we just recently um, did that study, and that's some of the results that we've seen um, on that system. Um, in that report um, and, and again very positive for us and comparing extremely well to the to the pragma uh, to the UK benchmark and you'll also see very interesting they give you uh, your management style quadrant there and you'll see our one top right um, sort of uh, quadrant is the participative quadrant where our own people can really you know partake in decision making so that's good to see so that's one system that we we quite um, positive about um, but I just recently also listened to a, a it was just a uh, latest, um, probably about 21st of December, um, I listened to a, a webinar of Marcus Buckingham. Um, he works for the Marcus Buckingham company, TMBC, and um, we talked specifically, he talked specifically about engagement and he talked about these four things that we need to get right in 2017 and beyond. And quickly about those four things, the right time engagement, and I said this before, is fluid, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a film, it's not a photograph, it's not a moment in time. Obvi you know, often we, we do these surveys, HR gets it, and then months later, it eventually gets to the team leaders as well, and then, it's, you know, then they have different teams, and you know, the timing is just terribly off. So one needs to be as real time as possible. The right questions. So it doesn't help us to ask the questions that's not going to really predict good performance outcomes. They did a lot of um, you know, research in this field and they've got eight questions that they typically ask that they feel really predicts performance outcomes. The right people. Very interesting one this, not according to the HR organogram which is typically outdated. Teams are also very fluid. People move around between teams. Um, they form new teams all the time. And a team ne leader needs to quickly be able to uh, change those teams and then launch an engagement survey. And that makes a lot of sense to me as well. And he also talks about the fact that why are you know, team leaders normally last people to see their own results? You know, that's after HR got it, then the CEO sees it, and the, then the exco sees it, and then only later on the team leaders themselves. And then lastly, the right actions. The right actions to be taken to improve those engagement levels. Knowing what to do about the engagement items is critical. Critical, critical. Um, and they've got a very... Uh, elegant approach where they um, give advice based on the particular team members and team leaders' strengths. All right. So yeah, it's just um, some of the latest research. Um, if you really want to dig in deeper, go and check out the Thomas Engage system. Go and check out the work of Marcus Buckingham. I'm currently uh, researching that quite a, quite a lot. We've also been utilizing on a test basis the standout system that he talks about in uh, this this webinar and that you'll find more information on his on his website about that as well very very excited about this let me end off with one slide employees will often tell you what they want from the company but for us it's also important to tell our employees what is it that we want to see from them and um, I've summarized it with these few elements accountability 
inquisitiveness and honesty, people walking the extra mile, that's really engagement. They need to want and they need to work to grow. They need to put in the necessary effort. They need to have the, you know, the want in them and I want to see that. People often, often say they want to get, they, they, they ask us, but I want to get involved. But please, if there's opportunities, get involved, Mr. Employee. Get involved. They need to add value. They need to think innovatively. We are in a very quick changing world and we need people with creativity and innovative thought. They need to be disciplined. There's still a lot to be said for, for discipline. I don't know when it's sort of flown out of the window, but it's still very important to see discipline in the workplace. Then intrinsically motivated people. Why must there be carrots in front of people all the time to try and motivate them? A point correctly, a point, intrinsically motivated people, people that's motivated from in themselves. They've, they, they, are, they are driving themselves to a, towards a certain goal. It's not my role as a company or as a manager to, to shape their career for them and to, and to do all their career development for them, for example. And then lastly, trustworthy. Be trustworthy. Don't break down the trust. Just as we don't, shouldn't break down any trust with our clients, um, when it comes to trust within teams, extremely important. So that's the Pragma engagement journey so far. That's our latest and new tagline. We've gone through a rebranding um, exercise this year as well. And for us, it is about asset management engineered. Really smart solutions. Um, delivered via smart systems to smart people and also via smart people of course if it was my own company I probably would have changed the um, the tagline to human potential unlock human potential unlock but that's just a, a, a little bit of an internal joke pragma is about asset management in the first place but it cannot be done it cannot be engineered who engineers that asset management it is our people and it is our engaged group of individuals working for us. So we will continue to focus on that. We will continue to unlock potential and we will continue to deliver the best possible service to our clients, to create loyal clients and to make an impact in this world of physical asset management. Thank you for your time. God bless.